I thought about putting this front 2x4 vertically hanging off the front, but if I did that, I'd have to poke the holes after I had the entire thing fiberglass, because I wouldn't be quite sure of how thick the fiberglass was going to be. Um, so I've decided to go horizontally across the front. It'll raise the front clearance up a little bit. Um, and provide plenty of strength and provide more area on the top side of the deck for screwing things into. The obvious downside is that you have to step over this if you're coming off the front of the boat. Um, but sometimes having something that keeps things from rolling off the front of your boat might be a good thing. So I think I am going to put this 2x4 across the top of the deck as opposed to across the front or under the bottom. All right, the two by four is glued to the front deck board. I have a micro balloon, micro bead fillet in there. I went ahead and laid that thing down out on the pontoons, pushed the bolts through to mark where the holes should be. And now it's time to cut some fiberglass and lay it up. So this is the first of three layers that will be on the top. You notice it's not overhanging the uh, edge of the foam here at all, and it's not even going up to the top of the 2x4, but this is mostly only for strength between where the pontoons are bridging this area. So I'm going to have three layers of chop strand mat here when I'm done. I'm going to be putting another full layer that goes all the way across the edge um, for my second layer on the top, and then I'll be flipping to the bottom, doing three layers on the bottom, and doing a final layer on the top that wraps around. All right, this is the second full layer of my layup on the top here. You can see I've cut all these guys so that as I wrap them around the 2x4, it hopefully won't wrinkle as I go around if there's any curves or anything here. And I'm not actually wrapping around any of the edges on this first piece. I'll be wrapping around on the bottom, I'll be wrapping around all three edges, and then when I do the last piece on the top, I'll be wrapping around as well. I've rolled the top layer all the way down to the end, and it can just hang out there. I've rolled the bottom layer halfway over, so I will place epoxy all along here on the foam board, roll that back, epoxy this bit in, and then roll this bit over, epoxy underneath, flip it back, epoxy on top. Once that guy's done, I unroll this guy over the top of it, and then I epoxy this whole thing. I should say, I put epoxy all over here, and as much of that as I can reach, unroll it, flip that end up, do the bottom, put it back, and then epoxy over the top and roll the whole thing. I'm starting this layup with about three quarters of a gallon of epoxy resin once this is mixed. Um, that might not be enough, so I have another, well I have about six in reserve, but these are the ones ready to open right now. Because nothing sucks more than getting halfway through a layup and running out of resin. All right, an hour and 45 minutes later, I've opened my new containers of resin and hardener. So I think I used a, almost a gallon of combined resin and hardener, maybe three quarters to a gallon, on this piece here. Um, it has two layers in the middle and one layer on either side. And that layer is wrapping around the two by four and hanging down here. After it dries, I will cut that off. So that is one day's worth of layup. After this, I'm going to be sanding the whole thing down, flipping it over, cutting that edge off, and then I'll try to do the entire layup of the bottom side in one day. One layer of fiberglass on the top. It's got a little bit of rigidity. Time to sand the whole thing down, cut the edge off, and 
cut the fiberglass for the other side. Okay, it's all sanded. I have it flipped over and with the two sawhorses and the adjustable stand in the middle I have the shape of the arch I want and since it has two layers of fiberglass in the middle and one layer of chop strand mat on these edges it's doing a pretty good job of holding this shape at least with a little bit of fiberglass on top will support the weight for that while it dries. Where the edge of the 2x4 was flush with the foam, this fiberglass just goes right across and I can sand this to the nice round corner. Other areas where my foam was inside of the fiberglass a little bit, um, it basically it didn't make the bridge of the air gap there, so I'm cutting at the 2x4 and I'm actually going to be filling in this whole region with my micro balloon putty to make a nice rounded corner that goes here to put the fiberglass on. I'm also going to be filling in all these holes with a runny micro balloon putty and I'll put a little piece of cloth tape on top of there as well. I have pre-cut three pieces of fiberglass to lay up tomorrow in one unit. Two of them are small. We'll have one in the center underneath this guy and then after I put the big guy down the other one will go on top. So we're going to have three layers here, and then one layer on either side of the bottom. And all the way around, this bottom piece is going to be wrapping around there, and then when I put the last top layer on, the last top layer will wrap back around. So I'll have two layers of chopped strand mat going around all the corners, and the top layer will be wrapping to the bottom to make the top level the neatest looking one. This is how I'm going to fold things around this 2x4. This guy goes down, this one goes over and down, and then this guy goes over here. So that's the plan for making that corner somewhat neat. Here's the plan of attack. Mix up epoxy. I'm going to use my chip brush to wet down the epoxy tape that I'm going to be putting on top of the holes after I'm done with all this. I'm going to take some glass beads, not too many, into this disposable cup, put the epoxy on it, make some really thin, pourable glass bead epoxy putty, pour it into my flexible mixing cup with the nice pour spout, and then use that to fill in each of these 12 holes. After that, I'm going to be putting these guys on top of the holes, just a little bit of extra support, tie them all together, because I can do it right now. Um, and then I'm going to put more glass beads into the remaining epoxy, make it into a putty, and use that putty to smooth the edge between the foam and the fiberglass on the back here. All my holes are filled with liquid epoxy glass balloon paste, and then I have these fiberglass cloth tapes over the top of them. Also used the epoxy putty with a little more viscosity to fill in anything here. I don't mind it being ugly like that because I'm just going to sand it down. It sands really easily. And here I've rounded around or filleted this join between the foam and the 2x4. Okay, I have the first layer, which only goes in the middle part here, between where the pontoons are, down. You can see it wraps around the 2x4 here. And then on the other side, it doesn't go quite all the way to the edge. And I need a little bit more resin right on this edge here. 
but next up is going to be putting resin down all along that piece of foam right there and then rolling this entire thing out over it, lining it up, lifting up this side, putting resin all underneath it here and folding it back down. Then I'll pour resin all over the top and roll it to combine these two layers here and put one layer on top of where the pontoons will be. I'm halfway through the second layer. There's two layers in the middle between the pontoons and then one layer across the whole thing. You can see I've been folding over this back edge and this side edge here. I've wetted those down and folded them entirely over. Mixing up another batch of epoxy to do this front edge and that side edge over there. And then the only thing that'll be left will be rolling the whole center with more epoxy. All right, I have the three edges wrapped around and everything laid down on top of this 2x4 or on this side over here. Now I just have to mix up more epoxy and roll the entire top. I have two layers wetted in the center with a third layer on top. You can see here on the sides, there's only one layer of chop strand mat there. I'll be probably using about 36 ounces of resin on top of that center piece of chop strand mat, and then I will be entirely done with the chop strand mat covering the foam board on the bottom. I will have to come back and put some struts across the center point between the pontoons, however. Okay, I have one layer of chop strand mat over the whole thing, and three layers in that center part where the pontoons aren't supporting it. Of course, when you're done with something like this, you have to be careful to check for pieces like that that have fallen out. And that's where you want to have your chip brush and your gloves to be able to stick that thing back in place before your epoxy completely solidifies. Luckily, it looks like that's the only one. I'll be hitting that with a chip brush to stick it in a little better. I used my open container of epoxy. So I opened a new guy. Didn't use much of it, um, but that's how much epoxy I'm doing here for this whole back half here is probably about a gallon. After fiberglassing the bottom, I sanded the entire bottom and vacuumed it, flipped the thing over, and then sanded the top and vacuumed it to get it ready to put the last layer of fiberglass chop strand mat across the top. Which isn't too fun when you're wearing a half-face respirator, P100 for the dust, safety goggles, and it's 90 degrees outside. This is the last piece of chop strand mat on the top. And then the top will be done, and all I'll have to do is put the spars across the bottom side. All right, where the chop strand mat has been curled around here, I have a bit of foam showing. So what I'm going to do is take this tiny little piece of chop strand mat and stick it right there, and then cover it up with this piece of um, woven fiberglass tape that's been cut kind of H-shaped pattern so that I can do a fold in and a fold in and put all those fibers in to kind of reinforce that corner before I put my last piece of chop strand mat across the top. I'm doing this in the two corners here and then I'll be putting the full chop strand mat around the thing. 
That's the last of the fiberglass on the top here. You can see here how far my fiberglass went down, so I probably used three quarters of a gallon over this single chop strand mat sheet. I put it on pretty heavy because this is the top sheet. Now all I have to do is sand this down, flip it over, put the spars on, paint the whole thing, drill the holes, and I will be done with my second deck board. Then one small one in the middle to go. My 165 foot full roll of chop strand mat is starting to look a little empty. Even though I fiberglass the top half, I'm going to have to sand the bottom as well. You can see, you know, there's the fiber fiberglass that overlaps right to there, but also some resin that comes out and needs to be knocked down. You probably see the shiny resin right there. It needs to be knocked down all the way around. Um, and I'm just going to hit this center part again for good measure to make sure it's roughed up because I'm going to be epoxying the spars down there. You can see the difference between one layer of chop strand mat there versus three layers here. The epoxy resin is clear-ish, but it has a slight yellow tinge, and so you can see there's the foam core insulation board um, that's more of a blue aqua color, and it turns into kind of a sea, form, sea foam blue um, when you have the one coat, and when you put three layers down, it turns almost into a, a greenish sea foam type green. Um, so you can see there is a little bit of color change, although you can still clearly see the Lowe's logo, or at least part of the Lowe's logo there. Um, I'm also going to be drilling out the center of each of these bolt holes because I want to put this thing on the pontoon and bolt it down and draw some lines on it to know exactly where the pontoon hits because my pontoons are not perfectly straight. There's a little bit of wiggle in there, and so I want to get the struts up near to them but not hitting anything because it really sucked to uh, have to cut the fiberglass strut off to make things fit. So I want to get the bolt holes, get the thing bolted on so I know exactly where to put those struts. I drilled 13 30 second holes in the fiberglass and I'm hitting quarter inch threaded uh, inserts in the pontoons and I have one hole there and one hole over there which haven't actually lined up quite right and I'll need to enlarge those holes but all of my other holes I was able to get these screws in so I did a little bit better than on the back deck board maybe it's just because the pontoons hadn't been sitting out as long um, or maybe it was because the back deck board was holding the pontoons a little more in line but things lined up pretty darn well with this one for me so this specific spot up in the front here, you can see is not exactly straight, and so that's why it's nice to just trace this underneath when it's mounted to get the lines exactly where you want them. For the holes that don't quite line up, I mark which side to file away to make them work better. I have some holes where the stainless steel screws go in, but it is kind of right at the edge of the hole, so I'm just going to file just a little bit off the side there since I'm going to have a file out anyways. If you follow this pencil line you can see how one of my pontoons is just a little tiny bit wiggly at the front here. So the spar I have on the front will maybe be just slightly shorter than the rest of them. I have the advantage here that the front has my 2x4 along it so I don't need to put a spar too close to that bend I put in this board for shedding rainwater is less than the one in the back board, mostly by accident. But you can see here when I push this down it doesn't have quite as far to go as opposed to the one on the uh, back deck board. But it still has the uh, water shedding height in the middle, so I think I'm a little bit happier with the bend I got in this board. I'm putting the spacing of these spars just slightly more than on my last deck board because I decided I want to be able to get my uh, hand sander in between these guys before I paint it. Even though it's on the bottom, it's nice to rough that up a little bit before you paint it. Uh, it's easier to do it mechanically than with by hand. 
I have the 2x4 at that end, so that's why this one's paced back here. And this guy here is about 3.5 inches from the end of this board, um, and I'll have the center deck board sitting right here. Use the excess putty to patch up a few places that were a little rough here. I realize it makes them look rougher now, but after I sand it, it's going to be very smooth because that epoxy putty sands very nicely with the micro balloons in it. I have my foam supports with spars in place. Today's job is to sand these fillets down a little bit so they're smooth. Cut epoxy. I'm going to be doing um, six inch wide fiberglass, woven fiberglass tape to go over the whole thing to begin with. And then I'm going to be doing little small pieces like um, one inch tall chop strand mats to s reinforce the sides and then some maybe two inch tall chop, chop, chop strand mats to curve around there. So I want about three layers of chop strand mat on both sides plus the uh, woven fiberglass on the bottom, plus I'll do a three inch woven fiberglass on the top to kind of cover in because these chop strand mats are going to just kind of stick up at the top here. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more fiberglass than I do for one of these full deck boards, but not a whole bunch more. And mostly it's just because it's in a vertical orientation, 90 degrees to the deck board, it's going to support it this way quite a bit. This is my H cut, which kind of looks like an H, although there's two of them. Um, it allows me to wrap this guy around there and then fold this down and over and still have that flat there. And that's what will completely encase my fiberglass or my foam struts. And then after that, I'll be building up a lot of strength on the outside of this with the chop strand mat. After I put the chop strand mat onto this, this will be going the top. This will be the very top layer. I'll fold that down around here. This is three inch long woven fiberglass. You can see it's not meant to go all the way down. It's mostly to join together and cover up all the different chop strand mat layers that are going to be going vertically. So earlier when I was making the pontoon nose cones I saved all my cutoffs because I knew having small pieces could be useful, although at some point the pieces get small enough you're probably just deciding, well I'm going to probably throw that pile away, keep this square pile, use these on these struts and call it good. So I just got done cutting three chop strand mats for each side of this spar here. So that's how much fiberglass I'm going to lay up on the left and right side of the spar, in addition to the woven fiberglass that's going on the bottom, then these three go up, and then the top. So I need to cut that for the three more spars. I'll cut a few extra just to have a couple extra on hand in case something goes wrong or I decide I want a little more, um, and then I can do the layup. All right, I'm finally running low on my scrap pieces cut off the nose cones, so for the last spar, I'll be cutting fiberglass brand new off the roll for the whole thing. Okay, I have the bottom layer for all four struts. I have the sides for two struts there, the sides for two more struts here, and then I have the top layer right there, and all of this chop strand mat, it's just extra in case I decide some place is a little narrow. I might put some of these big pieces here, right here, because this is an edge piece between the two deck boards, I might give that little section there a little more extra support. 
I'm going to mix a medium sized batch of resin to do the four woven fiberglass cloths. I'm just going to dump resin in between these spars and these three wells here and then I can just set things in there and wet it out and then use it. Um, and so I'll be dropping chop strand mat and the fiberglass cloth into these wells and hitting them with a, a, a brush um, and basically wetting them out completely and anything that drops back down will drop into those wells. Um, and so I'm going to be using this fiberglass part as a place to soak my stuff um, and just put extra resin down the whole middle there as well. All right, resin and hardener combined. I have maybe half a gallon to work with, but I have extras if I need it. I have gone from a collection of parts to a boat with a hole in it. I could conceptually put this thing in the water. The only thing that's stopping me is it weighs about 350 pounds. So I think I'm going to finish it here on the porch and then uh, carry the pieces down after I'm done with everything. So the warp of my pressure treated lumber didn't quite match up with the warp of the pontoon under it. I think some of that's going to go away when I put this in the water and the pontoon's going to conform to the shape of the deck board a little more, but I expect there will be a slight gap on that front right corner. Um, we'll see how big it is when I put it in the water if I care about it or not. All of my holes are lining up nicely. I don't have the fender washers on these bolts. I'll put them on after I reassemble it after painting, but um, most of the holes don't even technically need them to hide the hole. It's just for distributing the weight across larger areas of the fiberglass. All right, deflection test. About 18 and a half or so. Step on it. It's gone down slightly, maybe a quarter inch. I'm pretty happy with that. So previously I was limited by one fiberglass layup per day. Now I'm limited by one coat of Rust-Oleum topside paint per 24 hour period. In an effort to be clever, I'm going to put one coat of paint on the center part here and then I'm going to flip it over, support it on the sawhorses on the part that's not painted, and paint the entire top a second time. I'm hoping to get two sides painted in one day this way. Um, the way, reason I can get away with this is that I'm only planning on putting one coat on the sides here that are going to be against the pontoons and protected from the sun, but I do want two coats over there where it's, you know, maybe light will reflect off the water up into the middle part. I sand the paint with a 220 grit sandpaper to roughen it up for the next coat to stick and also knock down any high spots or anything. Um, so here you can see I have one coat in the center region and then around the edges where sunlight might sneak in. I'm only going to be doing a single coat in these areas here that are going to be up against the pontoon and so we'll really never see sunlight. So I'm going to basically have two coats in the bottom there that's exposed where light might reflect off the water. One coat's here and here. Um, and after this side dries, I'll flip over 
and the top side has two coats on it currently, but I'm going to be putting one last coat on top that's going to have anti-skid gr grit mixed in with the paint for kind of an anti-skid co coating to make it uh, less slippery if it gets wet. This is why I wear gloves when rolling exuberantly. All right. Non-stick surface is dry, ready to be mounted to the pontoon. Looks like it takes about 12 days to build a deck board, given slow cure epoxy and 24-hour top coat cure times. All right, let's see how much the front deck board weighs with paint. Sixty pounds. This one inch abrasion resistant cushioning washer goes between the pontoons and the deck board, and the deck board is held on by a extra large truss head screw, which is a quarter by twenty and um, 18, 818 stainless steel, and we have a fender washer which is a 0.87 outside diameter. I think that's a 7 8 inch outside diameter. So that's the hardware I'm using, 12 of those to hold this deck board on, 6 for each pontoon.